Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Bolt City Podcast. It is playoff week. Very exciting. We're just a few days away, guys. Again, Josh Pillay, Mario Heron, Dave Pillay joining you for this edition of the playoffs. Again, Chargers traveling to Jacksonville. 515 kickoff West Coast time as they take on the Jaguars. And it is exciting as we get closer to this game, guys. I think more and more people are realizing the games to pay attention to this playoff weekend are the four and five seeds on both sides, right? You look at the four and five seeds in the AFC, and that, of course, is going to be the Chargers face in Jacksonville. And then you look at the NFC, it's Monday night, and you're going to see the Cowboys travel into Tampa to take on the Buccaneers. So for me, the, those are my, my major interests of these two games. You know, one is because, you know, the legend of Tom Brady and the Dallas Cowboys brand. But for us, I mean, we're following the Chargers. And if I wasn't following the Chargers guys just as a football fan, this still would be the number one game of the weekend for me because I think it's the best overall matchup. I think it's the most even matchup. Uh, the quarterbacks alone, like we said last show, it's awesome, dude. You got two guys with blonde hair. I'm just kidding. You got two great quarterbacks <laughs> and everybody. <laughs> you got two great quarterbacks that everybody wants to see in, in Trevor Lawrence and, and Justin Herbert. Two guys that look like they can do everything on the field. They have they can run it if they want. They have crazy good arms, smart guys, good leaders. Two guys you want to see match up in the playoffs. It's really going to be interesting to see how the Chargers respond. Mike Williams today didn't practice. We're recording this on a Thursday. Mike Williams didn't practice today. That's something to look forward to, uh, to see if he's on the field. Still upset that Mike Williams was even in the game. But even without Mike Williams, I still like the Chargers' chances. I definitely think it's probably tied for first, honestly, the biggest game of the weekend. I think by far it goes up there with Bucks uh, cowboys like you said, because with Brady and – America's team and Dallas Cowboys still don't know how they got that nickname. Um, and it's very exciting. You have Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence, two young guys going into their first playoff game. And it's the tale of, oh, get ready for the first matchup of many in the future in the playoffs. You know, it's kind of like that start of the trend and all that storylines that kind of come with it. Guy love, you know, show love for guys with longer hair. You know, it's always a good one. This team has some success. Uh, I don't think I don't think that there's ever been a long haired quarterback that's won a Super Bowl. Ooh. So take that as you will. But I, I, I little fun fact for you. <laughs> Is it a fun fact or a fun theory? We got to think about it now. There's a lot of a lot of Super Bowls as far as uh, the guys with the long hair. I'm trying to think. You might be absolutely yeah. right on that one. You might be absolutely Dude, that's right. A good I can't. One. I can't yeah. th- <laughs> That's a really that's good a one. Good, <laughs> go ahead. Dude, it's why good don't you try to, yeah, try and drop that in a bar and see if it get punched in the face. And they're going to put that right up there with the who gives it. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Good, tri- good trivia thing. Like, what the hell? Go ahead. Just tap some random guy on the shoulder and drop that line on him. See what he says. Beat it. That's what he's going to tell you. <laughs> Buy me a drink or stop talking to me. Uh, so, look, here you go. You got the Chargers and you have, the, you have Jacksonville. I'm going to ask you guys, is this the first of many playoff matchups between these two, two two quarterbacks? Yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like the Jaguars are a year too early. So maybe yes, because the Chargers are definitely supposed to be here. Um, the Jaguars are built for the playoffs for years to come with the roster they have. The Chargers have a window of about, I'd say, you know, as long as Justin Herbert's there, that's how long the window's open because you always have a chance with him. It's hard, though, to predict two teams matching up the playoffs that are from two different divisions. I would like to see Trevor Lawrence in the division instead of Patrick Mahomes, but we don't get it that way. Hopefully the Jaguars can build a, a rivalry with the Chargers for a long time. It's, what do you think, Mark? You know, I, I really wanted to say yes right away, but with honestly just so much young QB talent in the AFC, like you truly don't know. Like You could say the same thing if this was the Bengals. You could say the same things if this was the Ravens. Um, like Bills, you could always say that like, oh, is this going to be start of a rivalry and start of something we see reoccurring over and over again? But – as of right now, it's you know very possible that yeah, this it could be the start of something. The Jaguars have a very good foundation right now of where they're looking at a strong defensive front, a good QB, and a strong head coach. Chargers franchise QB for getting there on the coach, and then you have you know some pieces there that do look for a playoff team and look for a team that will make a run in right now and for years to come. So yeah, I it's one of those weird ones where like I want to say yes at the same time. There's so much talent in the AFC. It's like, yeah, but also I expect more matchups with the Bills too and Burrow too and obviously like Mahomes too. So it's like one of those things where it's we're looking for the next Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, but really I think that's times that by six. I think that's just all over the place. Yeah, it's funny. That's why I asked you the question, Mario. I was curious to know because as we say all the time, you're doing the show from Indianapolis – and most of your life, you have watched the playoff matchups because of Manning and Brady and the storyline that went with that. And so I was wondering, you know, there's so many great young quarterbacks, guys, in the league right now that is this a matchup that we'll see these guys for years to come or will it go somewhere else? 
just looking through the division, and and we talk about the importance of the quarterback. In almost every division where a team finished in first place, that quarterback was the best player in that division. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Like in the AFC East, Josh Allen's the best quarterback in the division. Not surprising, his team first place. Joe Burrow, best quarterback AFC North. His team finished in first place. AFC South, Trevor Lawrence is better than the Titans, Colts, or Texans quarterback. He, it goes on and on. Even with the, the the AFC West with the Chiefs and the Chargers, it kind of finished in the order we thought it was going to finish in, right? Mahomes and then Justin Herbert. When you rank the quarterbacks, how important that position is. Really, the only one that – or two divisions stand out to me that might be different to go against what I'm saying. The, the NFC North – is the best quarterback in the NFC North? Is that Kirk Cousins? Is that is that the Vikings? Would you take Kirk Cousins over, you know, the guys that are there? Aaron Rodgers? Would you take him over Aaron Rodgers? Would you take him over Goff? No, I wouldn't. I would take him over Goff, but I think the best quarterback in that division is still Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, Mario, you're close to that division. I still think it's Aaron Rodgers. I think the situation for Aaron Rodgers this year was just so bad. I think the issues he had with LaFleur and some of his play calling really just kind of showed its colors this year. It's a whole nother level. I obviously know Devontae Adams killed them. But to that thing too, like Kirk Cousins got a new coach who's very smart offensive mind from Sean McVay. Also has Justin Jefferson, who um, two of us here like said that's the offensive player of the year. So he has that option that makes him look 10 times better while Aaron Rodgers is dealing with receivers that he refuses to talk to. So when you have that kind of issue, it does kind of change your impact of, oh, like which quarterback you would take. And if you want to do the really hot seat kind of thing, guy, you want to go sit next to across from a guy that's going to say sports more important than a guy's life, then I would say, yeah, that guy's going to say like Jared Goff or something. But at the moment right now, I still say that Aaron Rodgers, sadly, is still the king of the NFC North. You know what's amazing is when you look at the NFC West, okay? The Niners had, had an amazing season, 13 and four, three quarterbacks, right? Three quarterbacks they went through to end up with a 13 and four record. Now, the other quarterbacks in the league, not, you know, great quarterbacks in Seattle. The Rams obviously didn't have Stafford most of the season. Kyler Murray was, was banged up, but it's amazing that the Niners are what they are. And you look at the, the point difference with some of these teams as, as we get ready for the postseason. The Niners were 173 in the positive, which is pretty amazing. We'll, we'll get to our playoff picks, uh, you know, throughout the show. But the Minnesota Vikings, guys, for example, with that same 13 and four record, you know, the Mi Vikings overall had a minus three. They gave up three <laughs> more points this year than they than they uh, than they scored. I mean, how crazy is that to say? How does a team go 13 and four and give up three more points than you score? I think the Vikings have been pretenders all year. Almost all their wins have come like at the end of the game. They got blown the hell out by the Cowboys too. That hurt, hurts their point differential. Um, besides Brock Purdy, um, Geno Smith was the best quarterback, probably better than Brock Purdy, I guess. He played the whole season, the only quarterback in that division to play the whole season. Sure. The 49ers to me are like the perfect team besides the quarterback, I guess. Every, everybody on that team for their position is above average. I don't think anybody in the NFC wants to play the 49ers. Um, I'm just happy they're not in the AFC, to be honest. It'd be really interesting like to see the, I guess, change in the NFL if the Niners won the Super Bowl with Brock Purdy. Because right now we're in such a, I feel like, era where it's like, you got to have the QB figured out. If you have the QB figured out and he's a top five QB, uh, the level he's playing at, you're going to win no matter what, you're going to win no matter what. That's such like the theme, I feel like, the past couple years. And then you have a guy named Brock Purdy drafted in the last round, the second last pick, Mr. Irrelevant, who is, I would say, has been a, good for what he needs to be do needs to be doing and you'd have him win the Super Bowl and then the next year I don't know he could be out <laughs> Trey Lance could come back and like start that position or like Jimmy G could be starting that position so that would just be very interesting to me just to see like I guess how teams would maybe change their approach if that thing would have or to happen and be like okay then how did the Niners do this like would this be like the 01 uh Ravens team with Trent Dilfer won the Super Bowl and you're sitting there going Wow, really? Or Joe Flacco going, really? Okay, that guy's not good, but he's got a ring and, you know, Phil Rivers doesn't. So it'd be interesting uh, for me to see kind of how that narrative kind of changes. Just curious because we're on the topic right now. We'll get into this Charger Jags game in one second, but I, mean, I am curious that you brought this up, Mario. The Niners going into next year, who gets the starting quarterback? Who's the guy coming out of campus and this guy's a starter? It has to be Trey Lance, right? 
He's Ask the me. one that you invested your your time, your homework, everything in. You told everybody he's your guy. You didn't even let Jimmy Garoppolo show up to practice this last year until you had to. So it, even though it made the fan base and let's say the three of us go, Brock Purdy has done a fantastic job. I mean, Trey Lance is still going to be the guy, right? This is one of those they, they say face with, hey, I got to explain to the owner why I drafted this guy. Yeah, you're asking me. It has to be Trey Lance. I, I both you, you guys. Up, I'm curious. You gave, up, you gave up everything for Trey Lance. I mean, you just said basically going into uh, this season, Trey Lance is the guy. Then he gets hurt, and then Brock Purdy steps in. But Brock Purdy is still the last pick of the draft. So how could you say Brock Purdy is your future when you didn't even really think he was the future going into this year? Everything was based on Trey Lance. Because guys mess up all the time. I mean, Tom Brady was drafted 199. They kept, in Michigan, they kept trying to give Drew Henson the starting quarterback job. But here's my thing. If it wasn't Brock Purdy, I'd still think they'd win all their games. That's how good that team is. I, I don't think Brock Purdy's bad by any means. But I'm trying to say, if let's say Baker Mayfield was claimed off waivers, remember, because people were talking about the yeah. 49ers possibly getting him. I think they still win all their games. That's just how good that team is. What do you think, Mario? It's very – I I imagine you go back to Trey Lance, but also, I mean, Lamar Jackson isn't playing Sunday, and, you know, people are doing the rumor – uh, rumors thing right now going, oh, is it because of his contract situation? They extend Roquan Smith, who is similar to him, representing himself, wants to change the market, wants this huge contract. They give it to Roquan Smith, who's had a yeah. hell of a year, but kind of like, really? That wasn't like the best move of all time to do that right in front of Lamar's face. So it's like, the, I think about that a lot going, let's say they make it to the Super Bowl or they, you know, make it there and they lose. Like, if you're Lamar Jackson, if you're Aaron Rodgers, who could be in this situation, or, you know, more in the rumors if you want to go down there. Derek Carr, Tom Brady, you can't tell me that's not the perfect situation you would ever want to be in. And selfishly, as a football fan, we've never seen Kyle Shanahan with the franchise QB. We have literally never have. If he was able to get his hands on like Lamar Jackson or maybe just Aaron Rodgers in a short window, I'd be pumped to see just the talent and everything he could get out of that team and everything he could get out of a player like that. All right, since we're staying in the playoff picture, you bring up Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, again, the Ravens can hold on to him and franchise tag him and not give him what he wants anyway for at least one more year. Is Lamar Jackson faking this injury, in your opinion? Just as a football fan. you aren't. None of us are team doctors. We don't know. We don't, we don't know Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, in your opinion, do you think he's faking this injury because there's no guarantee on a contract? You go first, Josh. Yes. The answer is yes. I, I think cool. it just seems really fishy the way everything's gone so far with Lamar Jackson. Him representing himself is the beginning of everything being kind of weird about this. Him not playing this weekend seems to me like he just doesn't want to risk it. I I don't want to say he's faking it, but I would say he's probably milking it to a certain degree. Where he's <laughs> like, but by the way, I don't like blame him either. Like if I'm in his shoes, no, I'm not blaming him. I'm just asking. Oh him. yeah, I think he does it. Oh, yeah. I would have done the same thing. I'm like, hey, so you want me to go back out there where I'm gonna have to run for my freaking life? against the reigning AFC champions and throw yeah. to God, try to guess the name of this guy. Like, that's just not going to happen. Like, I would just be like, I don't want to do this. This is not set for me. And then you um, extend a freaking linebacker that is not that great in pass coverage. You extend his ass, but I'm sitting here going, I'm just going to go ahead and wait for my contract and you're going to franchise tag me. Like, if I was him, I'd, play, I'd say, get the F out of here. Like I would be, I'd be so upset. And I, if I was him, I'd do the exact same thing. I'd say, you know what, this uh, my hammy's actually hurting more this week, so I'm not gonna go do you a favor and run for 150 yards and try to throw my shoulder out trying to beat freaking Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. Do you think his teammates know? I mean, do you think honestly? Because it sounds like John Harbaugh when he's interviewed, it sounds like he knows. Like he know, he like he he doesn't get upset about it in front of the cameras. But he kind of pulls the move, you know, if Lamar's ready to go, we'll be happy to have him back on the field. Kind of not like this guy's screwing the team over. But I think John Harbaugh knows. Do you think his teammates know? And if you were a teammate of his, if you were Mark Andrews, would he respect it? Or would he just be like, man, you're taking years off my career? And I'd hate to speculate on Lamar Jackson's injury. I just don't want to say anything more. I, I know. It's, what, it, you know what I mean? I don't want to talk. I don't want to well, know. I'll, I'll know. give you an example. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to change up. And again, this affects where Mario lives, even though he wasn't alive when it happened. Eric Dickerson, one of the greatest running backs of all time. Okay. Eric Dickerson was one of the best I've ever seen in the in the 80s. Neither one of you were alive back then. But Eric Dickerson wanted more money from the Rams. And then all of a sudden he had a hamstring injury. And Eric Dickerson can't play. Okay. Eric Dickerson gets traded to the Colts. He plays three days later. 
I mean, all of a sudden, Eric Dickerson can't walk when he's in Southern California. All of a sudden, he's in Indianapolis, and there he is starting on Monday Night Football. And you're going, what the hell? And look, here, here's – I'm going to throw another one on there to age myself, and you guys will have no idea what I'm talking about, but somebody who listens to this podcast will know. There's a great line in the movie North Dallas 40. And the line they say, every time I say it's a business, you say it's a game. Every time I say it's a game, you say it's a business. And that's where Lamar Jackson is right now is Lamar Jackson stuck between the business and the game. And maybe that comes because he represented himself and is getting advice from his mom. I have no idea. But look, to sit there and extend the linebacker on your team, when if you had to pick which guy's more valuable to your team, it's by far the quarterback. The Colts are a joke, man, without Lamar Jackson. Nobody's afraid of the, uh, excuse me, the Ravens. Nobody's afraid of the Ravens right now without Lamar Jackson. Nobody. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. Yeah, I, 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 hey, I'm glad we aren't Ravens fans, you know? Yeah. So it's always uh, game day in in Baltimore. Great. <laughs> Inside joke, right there. All let's right, get into so, uh, let's get into Chargers. Let's talk about the matchup. Okay, let's do well, it. Yeah. So, what do you think going into this game? We talked about Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert. Is there anybody else on the Jaguars that that scares you? Anybody that you think is a good or bad matchup for us? What do you, What do you think? You want me to go first? I'll go. I'll go first if you like. Okay, here you go. Yeah. So I'm not, not worried at all about uh, the the wide receivers, as you guys, both you guys have said it. You said it today, Josh. Uh, Mario said it two days ago. They're they're a year too early. I mean, in Jacksonville, I think even Jacksonville shocked during the postseason, right? Doug Peterson made it be, sound to his team, "Hey, look, we're going to do this." That's what coaches have to do. They got to talk it up. They can't say, "Guys, we're a year too early." It's not our year. You got to basically play this game. You get the most out of your players. He knows what it's like to be a Super Bowl winning head coach and to make sure all the pieces fit together. Look, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, man, they're good complimentary wide receivers. There's nothing there that scares me. Okay, so I think the Chargers, if you – and sometimes they, they don't play very well against the run game. I'm not concerned about the run game for Jacksonville. It's going to be Trevor Lawrence almost playing a perfect game, in my opinion, for the offensive side of the ball for Jacksonville to have the success they had the first time they played the Chargers in week three. That was a joke. The, the Chargers were broken down. They were beat to hell – after that Chiefs game, all right, starting with Justin Herbert. But there are other guys on that team that were beat up too, and we all knew it. That was a shadow of what the Chargers really are. That's on a true test of what the Chargers are. And anyone in Jacksonville who believes that, hey, we beat the Chargers by 28 points, we're going to do it again this Sunday, so we're going to lay big-time money on it, go ahead. It's a completely different team. Unless you follow Charger football, you have no idea how good this team is and how capable they are of, of having success. The Chargers will go to Jacksonville, and the only matchup that I like better on the Jacksonville side um, is that on the offensive side, you have a quarterback and you have a coach combination, meaning you have a quarterback that's very good. I'm not going to take anything away from Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence right now is playing the best football of his life. And at the same time, he has a coach that has won a Super Bowl and is a quarterback whisperer. Okay. Doug Peterson has had tremendous amount of success. I wish the chargers had that. That's the one thing I wish the chargers did have Brandon Staley. Fine. You can say whatever you want him as head coach. He doesn't know what it's like to be in, uh, in in playoff mode as far as a coach-to-quarterback relationship. And that's the one thing I think we're missing. Player for player and scheme, I think the Chargers on the offensive side of the ball compared to the Jacksonville offense, I will take the Chargers seven days a week. What's your number if you had to say how many times the Jaguars run the ball? Because if I was calling the plays for the Jaguars, I'm running the ball 30-plus times. Easy, 30-plus times. Until the Chargers can prove they can stop Travis Etienne, wouldn't you run the ball – all the time in this game, like constantly running it over and over and over again. That's the tone you try and set, right, guys? I mean, that's the tone you can try and set. They tried to do that against Tennessee a week earlier, and Tennessee shut it down. You know, that's the tone yeah. you're going to set. So the Chargers know that, too. I'm guessing if the Chargers don't, then Brandon Saley is the dumbest guy on the planet. But Jacksonville knows the only chance they have for success is to establish the running game. Yeah. I, I, Mario, are you agree with that? Or, um, yeah. are, are, are we wrong? I mean, I know we, we just kind of went back and forth right there, but – in your mind, what, how did you think that Jacksonville attacks the Chargers' defense? So, looking at last game, James Robinson and Travis Etienne combined for 20 carries and 145 yards and a touchdown. James Robinson is also not in this game today, which um, is pretty big detail. So, Travis Etienne will take more carries. If I'm facing the Jaguars, there's three things I'm like nervous about. I'm nervous about what you said, Dave, the Doug Peterson um, coaching against Brandon Staley. Very nervous about that. It's a Super Bowl winning coach. With a backup quarterback versus Brandon Staley, who was first time in the playoffs as a head coach. And two, I'm very nervous about the run game. I'm extremely, extremely nervous. Because I was, you know, doing research, I looked back, 
the Texans game, they really abandoned the pass game pretty quickly because of the success they had on the ground. And they were going, if you can't stop the run, that's fine. We're just going to do it until you bleed. We're literally going to do it until you don't want to deal with it anymore. And that's a very big word for me. In the playoffs, that's a great way. What you say in football game? But in the playoffs especially, it's a great way to keep the other quarterback on the sideline chilling and him sipping on his Gatorade and not worrying about when the hell he's going to get back on the field. And that's a good chance for you to run out the clock and score points. Tennessee Titans did it with Derrick Henry. All the teams have done to make it pretty fun in the playoffs. The Niners do it. That's a recipe I could see Doug Peterson following and him doing it pretty damn well where it's really hard for the Chargers to stop. And that's honestly what scares me. And lastly is that front seven. Josh uh, Allen coming off that side and Walker is a very, very scary sight. And they've been playing out of their minds lately. So, yeah, I'm terrified of the run. I'm terrified of um, Doug Peterson and his coaching abilities in the playoffs. I'm terrified of that front seven. Yeah, so the the Jaguars played the Raiders earlier this year, who's not great against the run, and they ran it 28 times with Travis Etienne. I see it's something similar in this game where they're just going to keep giving him the ball until the Chargers can stop it. The Titans did a great job of limiting him to 17 yards. I don't know if the Chargers can do that. If, if they do, you know, if they can limit him to under, I'd say, even 80 yards, I'd be happy because that's going to be a huge part of this win. The, obviously, the Times have one of the best defensive players in the league in Jeffrey Simmons. The Chargers don't have that on the defensive line. But we do have players capable of limiting Travis Etienne to, to an okay game. I talked about Travis, Trevor uh, Lawrence a few shows ago. He doesn't really take over games. You don't see Trevor Lawrence usually with 400 passing yards and four touchdowns. He's not there in his career. If you can make Trevor Lawrence beat you, I think we have a better chance than just letting Travis Etienne run the ball all over the field. Because like Mario said, the last thing you want is Justin Herbert to be on the sideline, him getting phased out of the game because the Jaguars are just running the clock. That's a recipe for a disaster. How much are you guys concerned about Trevor Lawrence and his legs? Meaning that we, we talked about this with Justin Herbert. And, you know, playoff time might be the time to see Justin Herbert run more than we've seen him run because we know he's capable of doing it. That it, it's all here, right? It's it's the postseason or go home. We know Trevor Lawrence, if you watch him in college, very capable of running. Are, are you concerned? Or, and which quarterback is an advantage? Are we looking at mirror image of each other? Okay, I'll go first, Mario. Trevor Lawrence is underrated with his legs. People don't talk about how good he is within the pocket. His awareness of who's coming to get him and him escaping through the pocket is very underrated in his game. Probably the most underrated part of Trevor Lawrence's game is how quick he is with his legs and how smart he is at the same time of getting out of there. Justin Herbert on the other side of this needs to be like that in this game and the rest of the playoffs. If we want to win, Justin Herbert – can't pull up and throw the ball out of bounds. He needs to put his head down like Josh Allen and get the first downs. I know Trevor Lawrence is going to do it. He's been doing it his whole career. Well, he'll run for the first down. I need yep. Justin Herbert to do the same thing. It is. I agree with you, Josh. And uh, I like that thing that you said too about Herbert, where it's like, don't just go for the dump down. Let's just see if you can get six real quick or go ahead and get eight. There's nothing I feel like more defeating than having like a very good uh, pass defense. Like no one's open. You get kind of good pressure on the QB, and they somehow run for 10 they are ten yards get the first down. Like, to me, that's like a punch in the gut. And that's very something that Trevor Lawrence can do, and that would just be very – especially if the Chargers are behind, that's something I think that can just really beat down on them. And that's something that gets very overlooked. So I am worried about that. I am worried about third and eight. Chargers have, you know, Christian Kirk's covered downfield. He has nowhere to go. But, oh, he's just going to go run for 12 real quick because we have no one spying on him. That can kill them. That can extend drives for them, take Herbert off the field, and that can really, really hurt the Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah, I think vice versa works the same way. You know, again, I think this is the time of Justin Herbert runs. Uh, and if you look at all the quarterbacks, basically, in the NFL, they can they all do it. I mean, right, all the ones that are looking to have success, they do it. Outside of a guy like Tom Brady, who, you know, Tom Brady is great when it's, you know, on the goal line where he'll do the quarterback sneaks, but Tom's not a guy that's going to run. Not worried about Tom Brady. I'm worried about Trevor Lawrence and, and Justin Herbert, I think, could be a huge advantage. I mean, we talk about how important the Chargers wide receivers are when you look at Keenan Allen, you look at Mike Williams, you look at getting Everett involved as far as tight end goes, Josh Palmer. Things are going to open up. There's going to be opportunities for Herbert, not only in this game, but I think games down the line. I mean, Patrick Mahomes is not known as a very fast guy, but boy, is he effective with his legs when they need him. And you've seen guys do this in the past on their road to the Super Bowl. When you need it, the guys just don't dump it out of bounds or dump it down in the ground. They will sit there and, and get that extra yardage with their legs. It, and they, they know it. They earn respect in the locker room. The coaches aren't saying, hey, we don't want you to run. They understand this is the time. This is not week seven. This is, hey, we got to win or we go home. Yeah, I keep thinking about Cam Newton in the Super Bowl. Me and Dave laugh about this all the time. 
when he <laughs> at the end of the game when the ball falls on the ground and he doesn't jump on it. And his comment after the game was, it's okay, I'll be back here again. Guess what, Cam? You never went back there again. Same thing yeah. happens in the playoffs with Justin Herbert. This is the, it's now or never, just like in Waterboy. Like, this is the time, dude. You go for that. Yeah. You put your head down, you get the first down. Getting eight yards instead of six might not seem like a lot at the time, but it is. Every yard matters when, when, when it comes to the playoffs. So Justin Herbert absolutely needs to run around for this game because I think Justin Herbert is one of the few guys in the NFL who's actually better on the run throwing the ball. And that's a crazy thing to say because he's absolutely unreal in the pocket. But when he yep. gets out and he throws on the run, he just seems like he's even better. So I'm really looking uh, to Justin running. Also, there's another guy I want to talk about in this game. And I'm going to totally butcher his name. He's from Yale, the linebacker, number 23. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, but he leads the NFL in tackles for the Jaguars. I think you guys know who I'm talking about. Okay. 184 tackles this season. I don't care if there's 16 games or 17 games. 184 tackles is unreal. So that's the guy you absolutely need to watch in this game. If you're the Chargers, is number 23. Not going to say his name. Try it. Wait. Spell it. Oh, spell boy. It. You want me to spell it for you? Okay. It's F. Okay. Here we go. F O Y E S A D E is his first name. His last name is O L U O K U N. You pronounce it. I can't. Exactly. So he. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, number 23 for the Jaguars. He's a linebacker, 184 tackles. He's going to be flying all over the field. Let's try to avoid that guy. It's going to be hard to do, but the Jaguars actually have three guys on their defense with 100-plus tackles, which is pretty crazy. That is incredible, right? That, that's that's the one thing I noticed as well, is that the Jacksonville's defense does kind of scare me a little bit. I think we have a ton of offensive weapons, but Jacksonville's defense, look, even if you don't like the Jaguars and you just love watching football, you have to appreciate the intensity that Jacksonville has. I love the way those guys play defense. I love the, how intense they are. I love the effort they give. They are 100% play every play like it is the last play of their career. And you hear that saying all the time. You know, today might be your last game. This Jacksonville defense is is crazy, man. They're, they're hyped up. They're really good. They're really athletic. And anyone on that field can make a play. That's what scares me more than the offense is that Jacksonville's defense. At the same time, I think it was Fernando who told us guys two days ago, watch for a trick play early from Jacksonville. This is if I was the Chargers. This is where I do a trick play early. This is exactly where I do it. And I do it in the first quarter because those guys right now are so hyped up and they're so mm -hmm. young. They're bound to over pursue and make a mistake. And this is why I think you try and catch Jacksonville uh, basically being too aggressive. They won't listen to a damn thing I just said, but I'm telling <laughs> you, that's exactly what I would do. This, that's a good call. I, I want to point out another a few more things on the Jacksonville defense. They invested in their defense through the draft. This yeah. year they went with two linebackers in the first round which has paid off for them. That defense is fast. The first thing you notice when you watch the Jaguars play is how fast their defense. If you guys remember Rashawn Jenkins, former Charger, he looks like one of the best safeties in the NFL. He's on that defense as well. He's been balling lately. And the Jaguars also believe they have a shutdown corner in Tyson Campbell. Tyson Campbell was high school teammates with Patrick Sertan, who some people believe is the best corner in the NFL. Imagine going against that high school team with Tyson Campbell on one side and Patrick Sertan on the other. So pretty interesting, that story there. But the Jaguars believe they have the best young talent in the league on defense. And it's going to be interesting to watch. I agree with Dave. A trick play on these guys would be great. You know they're going to be jumping for picks, trying to get that big play, and then to go over the top on a flea flicker or something like that would be awesome. It would be awesome and shut that crowd up pretty quick too, you know? Yeah. That Jacksonville crowd was pretty loud last Saturday. If you get a good trick play to start off the game or start off a series, that shuts that crowd up pretty quick. And all you got to do if you're a Chargers offense, and I'm saying this as like it's the easiest thing in the world, it's not. But as long as you give Herbert some time and we roll him out and we give him everything he needs, they're 28th against the pass in the NFL. That's not strong. The weakness is in their secondary. So as long as we can expose that and God, please have Mike Williams play, I think they can really take advantage of that. And that can be the kind of like the spot they can really exploit of them. And I hate to do it this early, but on the gambling side, if you're looking at that too, 20th against a pass, if you see a little passing touchdown prop of Herbert, I would freaking jump on that so fast. Like I'm a fat kid on donuts, dude. Get on that quick. I love it. Do you guys want to give uh do you guys want to go through the Chargers awards? Or you want to do a score yeah. prediction? No, I want to do I want to do the awards and we'll hit to we'll get the score prediction pick games. But 
let's go through these uh, the, the season awards. I'm curious to know what you guys think. All right, you started off. Team MVP. Team MVP. I'll go first. We'll go with uh, Justin Herbert. And uh, you guys might disagree with me, and I'll tell you why it's Justin Herbert. Because if okay. Justin Herbert doesn't play, you're going to go, we don't have a very good chance of winning. He is the most valuable. He's on the, the, the V in there, the valuable part. Not most outstanding player, most valuable player. The most valuable player on this team is Justin Herbert. Okay. Well, you just killed my argument because you're you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you have? Who did you have? I had Austin Eckler just because of how many touchdowns he had. But yeah. no, but it, but it is because if you talk about the true definition of MVP, which is most valuable player, which people forget that V stands for valuable. Yeah, it's, just, it's not most outstanding player. Yeah, it's not most outstanding. It's most valuable, and the Chargers are absolutely not even sniffing the playoffs with Chase Daniel. So MVP is probably Justin Herbert. But for most outstanding player, if we were doing that, I'd say it's Austin Eckler. I'd agree with that. Go yeah, ahead, I agree. I went MVP, Herbert, second in passing yards in the NFL with what? I think it was 11 games on the year without his top two receivers. 25 passing touchdowns, 11th in QBR, only 10 interceptions on the year. And I think four of those, you could argue, wasn't his fault. He is that beautiful son of a gun. He's our MVP. <laughs> Probably will be for the next freaking decade. I uh, love so. that, man. He's kept us in every game. Yeah, he played six games this year with seven broken ribs. I don't know yeah. if that's true or not, but come on. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. When they win the Thank Super Bowl, that story is yeah. going to sound good. Offensive player of the year. Go ahead, uh, Josh. Who's offensive player of the year? Yeah, it's funny, man. So offensive player I had is with Justin Herbert. I had it flip-flop from what you guys probably have. Justin Herbert is the, the, sh- the guy that drives the ship, so I had him as the offensive player of the year. I still think Justin Herbert's a top-five quarterback in the league. We talked about quarterback stats last show. If you're looking just at stats, you probably have Justin Herbert outside the top five. But if you're really looking at a quarterback for who he is talent-wise, who he is as a leader, what he means to his team, I think Justin Herbert's still a top five quarterback. So I had him as my offensive player of the year. Mario, what do you got? So this is where I took Eckler. Um, obviously he leads the team in rushing. He's fourth in receiving yards on the team, which is kind of crazy. And then most of the year, he's honestly, let's be honest, in some games he was target number one in the passing game, which is depressing yeah. and very talented on his part as well. Tied second in the NFL and just rushing touchdowns at 13. Overall, I think – let me check my math real quick because I thought it was 18, but I just want to double-check. 13 rush, and yeah, I was right. 18 touchdowns total on the year. He's my offensive player. Beast. I mean, he's just a freaking beast. He's been consistent. Um, Herbert was my MVP, so for the offense, I wanted – I honestly thought Herbert too right away, but I just want to be a little different on the offensive side. I did uh, offensive player of the year. I'm Austin Eckler as well. Austin Eckler is my guy. Defensive player of the year, Mario, you go first. So this guy, he's my defensive player of the year, and he's my most improved guy. Um, Michael Davis, baby. Say his okay. name and show him some damn respect while you're at it. Fourth and tackles on the team, two tackles for loss, has a sack on the year too. Iron set, interception on top of it. Um, leads the team in pass deflections with 15. At one point, he was top 10 corner, according to PFF. Now he's at 26, but... I still think you should be higher than that. Some of those guys on there, I was like, come on, who's paying you? But um, he stepped in huge, stepped in for JC Jackson, who's out early and just wasn't really himself. Been great for us. He's like made it life hard on a lot of good receivers that we've put on him. And I'm a huge fan of him. He's done everything we'd asked him for. So he's my defensive player of the year and most improved guy. All right, Dave, what do you got for defensive player of the year? It's Derwin James. It's the defensive player of the year. It should be, and I'll tell you what, if you're Drew Tranquil, you have a pretty good argument. He led the team in tackles and sacks this year. But it's yeah. uh, it's Derwin James. He's the only guy who's all pro. All pro means he's the best player at that position in the NFL. Derwin James. Yeah, I have Derwin James as well. The only argument against Derwin James would be the team actually looked better on defense on the games he which didn't play, which, so. like we said, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But Derwin James is the best safety in the NFL, in my opinion. So I think Derwin James is asked absolutely the defensive player of the year for the Chargers, and he should be every year, just like Justin Herbert should be the MVP for every year for the Chargers. All right, rookie offensive player of the year. Josh, uh, you go first on this one. I'm going to go opposite uh, on this one. I guarantee it, whatever you pick. I'm curious. No, you go first. I'm curious what you have to say. All right, here you go. I'm going to guess that one of you guys is going to say Sailor. So I'm going to go Cameron Dicker. Cameron uh, Dicker. Oh, God. Dude, nice. Dude, nice. how valuable has he been? He has been a machine. And not only is he winning games last second for the Chargers, he won a game for the Eagles. You know, Cameron yeah. Dicker has been absolutely amazing. I think week five, he won a game for the Eagles this year. 
He's he's been incredible. And Sailor has we talk about him all the time. How how Sailor basically what six round pick and how good he's been. Sailor's been outstanding. But I'm going Cameron Dicker. Big Dicker. What do you got? Uh, I have Slayer. <laughs> That's mine yeah. Yeah. right away. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. yeah. But the Cameron Dicker call is really good. He's like one of the that's best kickers in, in the NFL. So that's, I can't argue your pick right there. That's good. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. I, I said I was going to go opposite of whatever you guys want. Rookie defensive player of the year. Mara, go ahead. You, you guys go first because I had a real like hard issue with this one. <laughs> uh, by the way, where, where was Sailor drafted? I, do I have that wrong? No, six rounds. Sure. Okay. That. Go ahead, Josh. Dude, I, I, I you want me to go I, first. Kind of, yeah, Josh? I want you to go. Yeah, you go. Okay, Jazir, Jazir Taylor. It's, yeah, it's, okay, it's right. rookie defensive player of the year. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah. Who, who, I, Mario, I'm assuming you have the same guy. Yeah. Okay, okay, I, just, I wanted Dave to go because he said he's going to pick the opposite. I'm like, okay, who are you going to go with? I no, I was going to go opposite on the offensive side. But okay, go on, got defensive it. side. That's what I have. Yeah, definitely for sure. Yeah. Okay, you, we're for all agree. Sure. Okay, here we go. Think about this one for a second. This one's kind of tough. I know the Chargers uh, are interested in this one because this is where we, we get heat from the actual organization. Coach of the year. Who's the best coach on the staff this year? Derek Ansley, the defensive backs coach, is my coach of the year. The, what the defensive backs have done this year, being shorthanded with Derwin James, is nothing short of remarkable. I, I got to give him his credit. I'm also biased because he was the DB coach at Alabama when I was there. But he um, he's great. He's done a great job with uh, Gilman and Davis, like Mario said, is the most improved player on the team. So I got to give it to Derek Ansley. I agree 100. percent If you're on the defensive side, it's let's be honest, the only bright spot in the defense. They're seventh against the pass. Everything else, they're in the 20s or worse, except for 17th and third down defense. But 21st points allowed, 20th in total yards allowed, 28th against the run, seventh against the pass, and that's due a lot to the DBs. All right, here we go. I'm going different from you guys, okay? Cody Seda. No one knows who the hell he is. He's the special teams coordinator. This year, has the special teams let this team down at all this year? There are three aspects to football, right? Mm-hmm. Offense, defense, special teams. Have we gotten beat on a, on a kickoff? No. Have we? They, has anyone scored off a punt return? No. J.K. Scott has been unbelievable and underrated as a punter this year, right? Yeah. He's been absolutely right. incredible. And Cody and Cameron Dicker has been outstanding. That tells you what I think about a lot of the guys on this, co- <laughs> this coaching staff that I knew the special teams guy, but that's where I'm at. He's the one guy who hasn't let us down the entire year. You're right. Underrated part of the game is special teams, and I don't know if we've had any kicks blocked either, so he's doing a good job. Yeah. Third of the game. <laughs> yeah, Third of the go game. Cody. Go, Cody. Yeah. All right, here, here we go. There are people so mad at us right now, I guarantee. At me, at least. Maybe not you guys. <laughs> people are super pissed right now. All right, let's do our picks. Let's do this. Let's knock this out. You got, you got, who do you get for most improved? Oh, were we doing most improved player? I'm sorry. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have that down. Who do you have for most improved? I had a tie. I had Michael Davis and Drew Tranquil. Going into the season, yeah. everybody's – well, not everybody, but the people I talked to said Drew Tranquil was a weak spot on this defense. He's absolutely a bright spot on the defense. So Drew Tranquil – is my most improved title with Michael Davis. Talk about coming out of left field. Michael Davis has been really impressive. Some of these games, he looks like he's the best corner in the NFL. That's how good he's been. But Michael Davis and Drew Tranquil are my tie for most improved. What do you got, Mario? I had Michael Davis. I said, it's, I mean, it's just the way he stepped in for JC Jackson when he went out, extraordinary. Two people that are uh, on the jersey list, okay? Michael Davis and Bandy. My two guys. <laughs> nice. And uh, while we're on the topic, too, Drew Tranquil, just another Midwest guy making something happen in the NFL. So, got to love it. That's Next right. Well, you know, I thought if we had to pick this before the season, guys, I would have picked Joshua Palmer as my guy. And then it's not. Yeah. It's Drew Tranquil's the guy. But if I had to pick this in, all the way back in September, I would have said it's Palmer. I mean, we, I did especially talk to Palmer up like crazy. He really showed up. I think it was one big game against – Atlanta, but otherwise Palmer didn't have the season I thought he was going to have. But uh, True Tranquil has been amazing. Again, led the team in sacks and tackles this year. For me, he's uh, he's that guy. He led the team he's in sacks. Guy. Yeah. Wow. I'm right on how that, right? Did, how many? Mario, did you, have, you have that. In, yeah. You have that in front of you. I don't have any stats in front of me at all. That's shocking, man. And sad. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> we're a little off, wrong. Dave. Yeah, we're a little off. Yeah. Am I off? 
Sorry, yeah, Kobach had eight sacks. And he, how many did Tranquil have? How, five. Don't tell you, like, how, He's tied for third. Two. Yeah, Morgan two. Fox at six and a half. Kyle Van Noy had five oh. also. What's that? All right, well, I, I drew Tranquil moms in him to me, and that's what I had. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't see. I don't know. Maybe it's the first show I've done with the classes, and I'm not looking at stats right now. I can't Let's see. Let's get the yeah, mothers man. out of this conversation. Right? <laughs> Easy, Zach Wilson. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Let's pick the games because Mario has some numbers for the games we picked last week. He was dying to tell us two days ago. Who messed up, Mario? Um, I'll give you a hint. It's the same guy that just messed up who has the most sacks on the team. <laughs> 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 that's it's not my day. Yeah, not so, my day. Sorry, I apologize. Drew, I was talking you up, man. It's talking you up. So uh after a tough week last week, uh Dave, you sit at 34, 39, and one. That's and nice. there is a tie. Me and Josh, 37, 36, and one. So you Ooh. had a big week last week, Mario. If you don't oh. bounce back. Big week. Big, you know what? I've always been a clutch guy. Ever <laughs> since, you know, back against the wall type of guy. Um, but, yeah, me and Josh are tied. So, this matters a lot. Wild card weekend. I like Big it. time. Okay. What was your record last week? I'm dying to know. You, were you almost perfect last week? Ten and five. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go. Let's let's get back on the on the winning side of things for me. Yeah. Should we, we pick all the games together this time since there's not that many? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Let's all right, let's do it different this week. All right, um, what's the first game I'm, I'm, I'm on Saturday? Who plays first? Niners, Seahawks. Niners are minus six. I mean, minus nine and a half. All right, I'm going to go uh, Seahawks to cover. I think the game's going to be closer. Look, I'm going opposite of Josh. I'm going to nine, Niners. I'm Seahawks stink. I think, yeah, Niners win, but I think that things closer than nine. I don't think so. Okay. Well, that's why we pick different. Well, what place are you last? It's all right. It's all right. All right. Yeah. Big mistake. And why is Cheap Sheets talking over here? You know? Yeah. So the nose <laughs> Uh I, I'm going to, I'm going to Seahawks too. I, I I think they keep it close. Pete Carroll's gonna come up with something to keep it. Um Chargers, Jags, Chargers minus two and a half. Chargers. I think the Chargers win by more than uh, three points. Uh, I'll, I'll go next. I, I'm with Josh. Chargers win by more than three points. By two and a half points, whatever. I'll get into later when we do final score predictions, but Jaguars plus two and a uh, half. I'm, I'm really nervous, dude. I do not have a good feeling about this game. As The more I look at stuff, I'm I am surprised by that by that spread. I'll be honest with you. Did that it's line moved change? a lot. That's what I'm saying. That line changed, right? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. It went, it went down to minus one, like a pick them, and then now back to two and a half. It's like it's been crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, so is this one actually? Bills minus 13 against the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I got the Bills. Skylar Thompson. Name one other time that there's two seventh round quarterbacks, rookie quarterbacks playing in the playoffs in the same week. Him and Brock Purdy, seventh round quarterbacks out of the wow. Big 12. So I think the Bills just blow out the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Tua's not playing, Mozart's not playing, right? Um, that's that's tough right there. I mean, honestly, it's weird to th- say this, but honestly, I think Miami's best chance would be if it was snowing like crazy and that they were able to focus more on the run. I, I just, I don't know, man. It's it's this is a bad game. This is a bad game. Uh, I'm going. I'm going Buffalo. I'm going Buffalo as well. Even though that's a big number, but especially in a playoff game, I yeah. just don't see how Dolphins even have life. To even win that game, uh, Giants. This is line has literally stayed the same. Giants, this is a crazy game, yeah, yeah, crazy game. Um, battle of mid for like the playoff teams. <laughs> Giants at Vikings. Vikings minus three. I'm gonna go Vikings to cover. Go ahead, Mario. You go. You go second. Giants plus three. I'm going Giants too. And Giants almost beat them a couple weeks ago. I'm going, I'm going Giants. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, the Vikings are the strangest damn team I've, I've ever seen in my entire life. I've never seen a team with that many wins that was so unimpressive. First time. <laughs> yeah. First playoff game for both coaches, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, Ravens, 
go to at Cincinnati. Cincinnati's minus nine and a half. This came out at five and a half, so four point swing. Okay, so we talked about this earlier uh, in the season that the Ravens without Lamar Jackson are such a mid tier to bottom tier team in the NFL. No talent on the offense, to be honest with you. There's nothing on the offense besides Mike or Mark Andrews that scares you about this team. Throw in Tyler Huntley, the third string quarterback, is starting. And it's calling for blowout. So I'm saying the Bengals blow out the Ravens if uh, Lamar doesn't play. How much Josh on that exactly? And the Bengals blow them out without Lamar. Gosh. Well, when you look great. at these spreads, Mario, does it make you want to uh, place to place bets this weekend? Or are you like, man, these, these numbers are just too high and too scary? Um, So if like, the numbers are too high, but I still have a lot of confidence in, like Buffalo and like Bengals, I would just combine them and tease them. And just buy the six. So take that down to three and a half. That one, that's that's fine. I, it's gonna be about more than a field goal. And then for Buffalo, they're gonna win by more than a touchdown against the Dolphins. So that's what I would do in those big spread games. But like the get like Giants and Vikings, I'm I'd stay away from Seahawks, Niners, I'd stay away from, and then Chargers, Jags, I'd stay away from too, and just be like enjoy the game. You know, no need for the thrill. <laughs> so you taking Bengals, Ravens in this game? You're taking Bengals. I'm taking Bengals, yeah. I, like Ravens just have look, they looked defeated last week, and every report sounds more and more depressing. I just don't see how they even hang, how like they even have anything to fight with in this game. Like you said, no Lamar, they have nothing. They literally have nothing. Mark, Mark Andrews is great, but yeah, throw him the ball. Um, Teams Cowboys, they know it ahead of time, right? If you're the what? Ravens, if you're the Ravens, you go into that game knowing we don't have much of a chance to. I mean, we're sitting here saying it on a podcast. If you're in that locker room, you're like, come on, who are we kidding? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Cancun on three. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Buccaneers, First Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys minus two and a half at the Buccaneers. Okay. What's, Mario, the with these Monday, what, what's the deal with these Monday night games? I mean, how's that fair to whoever wins this yeah. game? Give them a short week. It's kind of crazy, you know. I, I I agree with you. In the NFL, this should never happen, ever. Yeah, no team yeah. should ever have a short week in the playoffs. It's bull, bull crap. I mean, you're gonna but play I a want... short week and then go play the Eagles. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, it's an uphill bout, battle for sure. I want to hear Mario go first on this one. I agree with that, but at the same time, Tom Brady, you've like had a good amount of luck in the NFL. I think you can handle a little short week, a little minor inconvenience for you. Um, I love boxing this. Like, I'm in love with it. I think I think they pulled out against the Dallas Cowboys. Pri- playoff Dak versus playoff Tom Brady. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Dallas. You know I'm really on uh, Tom Brady winning this, but everybody seems like they're picking the upset, which is yeah. um, the Bucks. You know the Bucks don't have the team that's as good as the Cowboys, but they have Tom Brady, so it's hard to go against Tom Brady. I'm going to go with Tom Brady too, but it does concern me that everybody seems like they're picking Tom Brady. With that being said, I can't bet against Tom Brady, so I'm going to go with the Bucks. Yeah, right? I mean, it's to the point you're a fool to bet against Tom Brady. You lose, and you're like, what was I doing? Not because it gives me over 20 years of reasons to to bet for him, right? You feel like an idiot if you're the guy that, that goes against him. I'm going Buccaneers as well. Going Buccaneers as well. All right, let's go final score of uh, the Jaguars-Chargers game. Yeah, I'll go first. I'm going to go um, I'm going to go 23-17 Chargers. It's going to be low scoring. Defense is going to step up, and Chargers are going to get the win. 23-17. I'm going 34-27, Chargers. That's a lot of Ooh. points. I'm going 34-27. And uh, honestly, now I'm really curious to know what Mario says because he picked the Jags as far as the gambling side of things. What's your final score? 24-21, Jags. The, the, Holy cow. It, it sca- Chargers are 1-5 against playoff teams this year. That scares the crap out of me. And One are five. due. Mins are due. I hope Drew Tranquil, man, in the offseason, drives down the road and punches you right in the face. Yeah, he should. <laughs> if I, I welcome it. If they win, I, I'll welcome the punch. I will say, do you know what, buddy? Hit the nose. We'll snap her back in place after. Are I, you, I, I hope I'm wrong. I really do hope I'm wrong. But are I, you I, scared? I, yeah. Are you scared because Mike Williams is questionable, or what makes you so scared about this? Mike Williams that makes playing. me really nervous that he's questionable, and I just really think that Doug Pearson will stay with the run the whole time. I think he'll they'll establish it. I think they'll stay with it the whole time. Mike Williams be being out really does hurt us, and I don't have any faith in Staley out coaching Peterson, which I think is going to come down to that. Or Peterson, I'm sorry. 
Um, I think it's going to come down to that. And I have, I have zero faith in that. I couldn't have less faith in that as my ear pod dies. Couldn't have less faith in that. Look. All right. What about talent for talent? The guys between the white lines. You still, I'm not going to try and talk you into it, you know, but I'm going, I'm going chargers. I'm not just saying it because we're doing a charger podcast. I hundred percent believe that the chargers uh, pull this thing out. I don't I, know. No, I hope I'm wrong. I, I, I do too. I hope you're wrong. Yeah. I'll DM Drew Tranquil if they win and go, you can punch me in the face and we'll set it yeah. up, California. I don't care. Yeah. Like, you can knock me out if you really want to. I hope he beats the dog crap out of you wearing his Notre Dame jacket. Well, uh, that's too far. <laughs> his Letterman yeah, jacket? Yeah. If he, still, jacket. if he still has that, then we should ask some more questions. I hope he's wearing his, <laughs> <laughs> hope he's wearing his class ring on his other hand while he's holding you by the top of the shirt and just punches you in the face multiple times. Go ahead, dare you. I hope I'm wrong. I'm hope I'm wrong. I hear those Notre Dame guys like to wear those class rings. Just remember. Yeah. All right. I hope you're wrong too. God, this show's on a roll. This would suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's my other thing. It's like if I if I'm too confident, I it's gonna yeah. make me feel worse. So I'm like trying to I'm thinking about that too. Where if I'm too confident and that they will win, that will not go well. So I know yeah. I'm like, okay, then but one in five against playoff teams really makes me nervous. All right. I do I, believe Mike Williams is going to play. Like, if Mike Williams doesn't play, I'll be a little irritated. But I honestly, I believe Mike Williams is going to play. Can we go uh, players to players of the game real quick? I'm super curious what you guys have. You want to go yeah. first, Mario? They have Dave go first. Okay. I'm, you can I'm pick. Going... Hey, you can pick Derw- Derwin James if you want. By the way, or no, or I'm Justin not. Herbert, or Justin I'm, Herbert. I'm, okay, here you go. I am picking Drew Tranquil. Okay. Yeah. Okay, my bodyguard, Drew Tranquil. And I'm going to, and honestly, I am going Justin Herbert. This is where Justin Herbert starts writing his legacy right here in this game. I've never picked Justin Herbert an entire year. This is Justin Herbert's day. All right, here we go. You guys ready for this? Joey Bosa, player of the game for the defense, offensive player of the game. Shocker, okay? DeAndre Carter fumbled last week. He's going to step it up this week. Nobody expects DeAndre Carter to do anything. He's going to step up. Also, the five best players of the Chargers defense heading into the season all born in Florida, going back to Florida. They're going to ball out. The defense is going to step up. God damn it. That's a good point. Uh, <laughs> um, offensively, I so like I don't think Mike Williams is going to play just because he hasn't practiced. I, I've been back. That scares me, so I don't think he's going to play. I'm being a real negative Nancy over here. I'm sorry for that, fans. You are. Um, I deserve the hate in the comments for that one, especially if we win. You can bury me in the grave. When we win. When we win. When we win. When we win. Yes. Not 24-21 loss. Keenan Allen is my offensive player. I don't think Mike Williams is going to play. I think Keenan Allen, what, this is his second playoff game, right? Second or third? He's been in the playoffs three third. times. Third. 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 Fourth playoff game. He's been, fourth this is his game. fourth appearance? Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Big veteran on the offense with that. He's going to have to be reliable um, source for Herbert the whole game. Going to have to be a reliable target. Going to have to be open. Going to have to reach the end zone a good amount of times. He's my guy to watch on that side. On the other side, I've been saying it all year. He loves the spotlight. Florida boy. Mac daddy. Yeah. Like loves it. the spotlight. Loves a little playoff action. It's screaming for him. I think he's going to have a big day. I actually do think he'll get a sack. I'm looking actually for that prop. I think he can actually sack Lawrence a couple times. All right. By the way, um, as we're doing the show, Lamar Jackson tweeted out, knee remains unstable. It's been 17 state practices, 17 straight practices, five games. And uh, by him saying knee remains unstable, I mean, it sounds like he's not going to play. Kind of giving a heads up to uh, to what's going on there. Um, that's very interesting as far as what you pick. Here's my question for you guys. Cheryl Bosa, the mom of Nick and Joey Bosa, what game does she go to? Does she go to the Charger game or does she go to the 49ers game this weekend? Got to go to the Charger game. They're from Florida. Yeah. Got to go back to Florida. Yeah, yeah. cheer on. Dude, who, wants those... to watch, yeah, third, no, who wants to watch the third Seahawks 49ers matchup? Even the mom's like, get me out of here. I don't want to watch this crap. Go watch uh, your, Go watch the older brother. He needs all the help he can get. Yeah, and like the Niners, it's, it, they're going to be in the second round no matter what. All right. That's what she's it, thinking. She's yeah. thinking Nick's going to have be playing next week no matter what. Yeah, Nikki Boo, <laughs> you had a good enough season, buddy. You got the next round. Let's go see big brother Joseph. Down in Jacksonville. Sorry, you have to be in Jacksonville. But, you know, better game. <laughs> All 
All right, good deal. Here's the here's the exciting part. The game again is five fifteen kickoff West Coast time. We will be doing a show, believe it or not, as soon as that game is over. All right, we'll get the podcast up as soon as we can. We'll give uh, basically all our thoughts on what we saw, what we like, what we have to look forward to. But uh, even though it's late back on the East Coast, for you Charger fans out there, please stay up, get a chance to listen. We do want to hear your comments. Again, we, we are curious to know. At the same time, you hear the show before the game. I'm curious to know who are your picks to click. We all want to – we talk about it all the time. Picks to click, final score – all that stuff. This is the game I do want predictions from the people that listen to this show. Please don't hesitate to write them in the comments. Let us know or tweet tweet at us and let us know what you think. Who's going to win? What's the score? Who's going to be the player of the game? All that stuff is good for us. But we will be back on Saturday night right after the game against the Chargers and Jacksonville. Those two teams going at it in Florida this weekend. Exciting times. After that, hopefully we're talking about a big Charger setup for them to take on the Chiefs. All that stuff's extremely exciting. For Josh Pelle... Mario Heron, I'm Dave Palais. We'll talk to you uh, in a couple days right there, hopefully after a big Charger win. Thanks, everybody.